Hello everybody. Welcome back to the Butterfly Monkey channel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the last couple of videos that I made. The one about the senator and the private trust with public trustees. And then the, the court case involving the two cases of uh, married couples creating a trust and trying to allocate or, ass or assign their income to the trust that was incurred in their uh, private individual capacity. At least you can see the differences and the principles of law that are <clears throat> in those cases. Today will be a course continuation on trust law. Uh, at least the last video, this is gonna be something specific also. So as we all know, they have definitions and terminology which embrace or encompass what is considered domestic and what is considered uh, foreign. This case is one of them. There's another case which I highly recommend people to read, and that's Ken Ross versus Cooper. This one is at the state level. This one is on the federal level. All right, so hopefully you guys... <clears throat> Well, like and subscribe, of course, and then read the case for yourself. Ask me any questions that you need to, and uh, we'll go from there. But to start, I'm going to read off this syllabus, and it says, so it's Elliot versus Freeman, 220 U.S., 178, 1911. This right here is an appeal, right? So they already, uh, they uh, either won or lost. Right from the original court case. And it says, It was the intention of Congress to embrace within the corporation tax provisions of the Tariff Act of August 5th, 1909, only such corporations and joint stock associations as are organized under some statute or derived from that source some quality or benefit not existing at common law. This is key here. Deriving from that source some quality or benefit not existing at common law. A trust formed in a state where statutory joint stock companies are unknown for the purpose of purchasing, improving, holding, and selling land, and which does not have perpetual succession, right? Perpetual succession, but ends with lives in being and 20 years thereafter is not within the provisions of the corporation tax law. But they're calling it here statutory joint stock companies. In reality, it's an unincorporated business uh, organization. Association probably is probably the term. <clears throat> so this is appeals from the Circuit Court of the United States for the District or Met of Massachusetts. Uh, it says, the facts which involve the construction of the corporation tax law are stated in the opinion. Mr. Justice Day delivered the opinion of the court. You, you like how here, look at, they capitalize Mr. Justice, but they don't capitalize the word Day, his last name. <laughs> I see this commonly in most cases. At, with, at least with Justicia. These cases present facts differing from those involved in the consideration of corporation tax cases just decided. So the case that was just decided is Flint versus Stone Tracy Company, right? which I recommend everyone to read. In number 448, the question is raised as to the right to lay a tax under this statute upon a certain trust formed for the purchase for the purpose of purchasing, improving, holding, and selling lands and buildings in Boston, known as the Cushing Real Estate Trust. Now, if you guys want to read this trust, it does exist. Is it here? Let's see if it's here. Cushing.
What is it? Ludlow Associates. Uh, maybe this one, this document doesn't have it. Yeah, this document doesn't have it. There's other documents that have it at the back of the book. And that's uh, um, where I got to look at. Oh, where did I just put this court case at? And now my computer's lagging. Okay, here. <clears throat> By the terms of, but it's possible to read this court case. I probably have it somewhere. I know I have it somewhere. <clears throat> By the terms of the trust, the property was conveyed to certain trustees who executed a trust agreement whereby the management of property was vested in the trustees who had absolute control and authority over the same with right to sell for cash or credit at public or private sale and with full power to manage the property as they deem best for the interest of the shareholders. Their shareholders are to be paid dividends from time to time from the net income or proceeds of the property. And 20 years after the termination of lives and being, meaning the last person of the original contract, the property to be sold and the proceeds of the sale to, do, to be divided among parties interested in. Now, whether that means other parties, who knows, but divided among the beneficiaries for sure, right? The key thing to understand about this whole sentence here, it's all business. It's no one is getting property at the end of the day. Everyone is getting paid by in some way or some format from the distribution of the assets after they're sold, the distribution of the income after it's sold. The trustees were to issue 4,800 shares to the owners of the property at $100 each. The owners to receive a number of shares equal to the value of the interest conveyed to the trustees. The shares were transferable on the books of the trustees and on surrender of the certificate and the transfer thereof in writing, a new certificate is to issue to the transferee. No shareholder had any legal right or interest in the property and no right to call for the partition thereof during the, continuation, the continuance of the trust. The legal representatives of, the, of a shareholder are to succeed to the interest of a shareholder, the interest passing by operation of law, like heirship, trust law, you know, wills, and so forth. Provision is made for the termination of the trust by an instrument or instruments in writing signed by not less than three-fourths of the value of the stocks held by shareholders. Meeting of the shareholders are held at their discretion or whenever requested in writing by five shareholders or by shareholders owning not less than one-tenth of the shares in value. You understand? You look at this this uh, terminology that they use. This is a this is part of the trust indenture. It says writing signed by not less than three fourths of the value. So basically, one person who owns three fourths of the value or more can create can uh, the termination of the trust can be made. That's how I would look at this: three fourths of the value of the stock. It's not three-fourths of the possession of the stock or anything like that. It's the value. Whether that means the same, who knows. The trust has a building, leasing it to a single tenant. It also maintains and operates an office building with elevator service, janitor service, etc. Case number 496 involves what is known as a department store trust. It was created by deed and formed by for the purpose of purchasing and holding certain parcels of land in the city of Boston and erecting a building thereon suitable for the department store. The land and buildings are leased to one tenant for a period of 30 years. The trust had transferable certificates issued to shares at par value at $100 each. The trustees conduct, conduct the affairs of the trust, manage the property, and pay dividends when declared. The shareholders meet annually, and the majority of them 
have the power to elect or depose trustees and to alter and amend the terms of the trust. This trust also continues for lives in being and for 20 years thereafter. Each of the trusts involved in these cases in, is in receipt of net income exceeding $5,000. So there's two trusts here that they're talking. One of them has beneficiaries having powers. This is 1911, so the aspects of, right, the attributes of what makes an association and corporation have not been introduced yet. Like, they're here present, right, but they haven't been uh, accumulated all into one spot and been given a proper uh, definition, I guess, so to speak. Or description, right? Description would probably be better. <clears throat> Under the terms of the Corporation Tax Act, corporations and joint stock associations must be such as are now or hereafter organized under the laws of the United States or of any law or of any state or territory of the United States or under the acts of Congress applicable to Alaska or the District of Columbia. All right. This right here, we have seen this plenty of times, this definition here. This is in... This is under the word domestic for corporations under Title 26, 7701, right? What is it, A4 or something like that? Or A, yeah, A4 for domestic. A9, A10 is the definitions for state and United States, so A4. Now, but the thing is, is what does this mean, right? And remember, right now, that statute is written in regards to corporations. Here, they are discussing two trusts. But the definition for the Corporate Tax Act is damn near the same as it is today, 124 years later, 114 years later. The pertinent question in this connection is that these trusts organize under the laws of the state. The pertinent question in this connection is, are these trusts organized under the laws of the state? As we have construed the Corporation Tax Act in previous cases, meaning the Flint that they just did made a decision on, the tax is imposed upon doing business in a corporate or quasi-corporate capacity. That is, with the facility or advantage of corporate organization. It was supposed, it, it was the purpose of the act to treat corporations and joint stock companies similarly organized, meaning companies similar in nature, right? As a corporate structure. In the same way and assess them upon the facility in doing business, which is substantially the same in both forms of organization. Joint stock organizations are not infrequently organized under the statute of statute laws of a state, deriving therefrom in a large measure the characteristics of a corporation. So here they're saying they are not infrequently organized under statute laws. The language of the act, now or hereafter organized under the laws of the United States, etc., imports an organization deriving power from statutory enactment. That means the word domestic, as it's used today, imports an organization deriving power from statutory enactment. So anything that is not this at least in regards to corporation, is foreign. At least in regards to corporations for the statute as it's written today. They changed. They, they did away with this, trying to test this on trust. So instead they created their own, def, their own um, description for that type of a trust. And what was that? That is what? Uh, 7701A30 or something like that? And that's, of course, the control test and the 
the the court test, court and control test. The statute does not say under the law of the United States or a state or lawful in the United States or any state, but is made applicable to such as are organized under the laws of the United States, etc. The description of the corporation or joint stock association as one organized under the laws of a state at once suggests that there are such as are the creation of statutory law from which they derive their powers and are qualified to carry on their corp their operations. The trust of the character of those here involved are hardly to be said to be organized within the ordinary meaning of that term. It certainly is not organized under statutory laws as corporations are. The difference between sto joint stock associations at common law and those organized under statutes is well recognized, and they give you an, uh, an authority on, tr on corporations. Cook on corporations, subsection 505. They're telling you that there's a huge distinction between joint stock associations at common law, meaning your right to contract recognized at the common law, and those organized under statutes. So I would recommend you guys going to a law library, looking up that statue. There is an essential difference between a joint stock company as it exists at common law and a joint stock company having ex extensive statutory powers conferred upon it by the state, which it is organized. The latter kind of joint stock companies is found in England and in the state of New York. To such an extent have these statutory powers been conferred on joint stock companies that only substantial difference between them and corporations is that the members are not exempt from liability as partners for the debts of the company. So this characteristic right here, exempt from liability, that's a corporate characteristic. It's in one and it's not in the other. The two cases now under consideration embrace trust, which do not derive any benefit therefrom and are not organized under the statutory laws of Massachusetts. Joint stock companies of the statutory character are not known to the laws of, co of the com that commonwealth. These trusts do not have perpetual succession, but end with lives in being and 20 years thereafter. Entertaining the view that it was an intention of Congress to embrace within the corporation tax statute only such corporations and joint stock associations as are organized under some statute or derive from that source some quality and benefit not existing at the common law. We are of the opinion that the real estate trust involved in these two cases are not within the terms of the act. In that view, the decrees in both cases will be reversed and the same rem and the same remanded to the Circuit Court of the United States for the District of Massachusetts with directions to overrule the demurs and for further proceeding consistent with the opinion. Now, what did they just say here? They just told you that Creation of an object, in this case a trust, which now they use just for corporations, means being created by the privilege of statutes. So that same uh, intention there is with the, the definitions at 7701, right? If we go there now, you can see 7701. Right, so here's the definition for domestic. When applied to corporations or partnerships means created or organized in the United States or under the law of the United States. You, you see the difference here? Domestic and what's foreign is not this. 
And then if we scroll down for trust, right, foreign estate or trust, the term foreign estate means an estate income of which from sources with, without the United States, which is not effectively connected with the conduct of a trade or business within the United States is not includable in gross income under subtitle A. Where, where's the other definition? Right here, any trust. So a United States person is any trust if a court within the United States can exercise primary supervision. This right here is a specific terminology. It means can the court act as trustees and have full power over the trust, no different than the trustees do now. That's huge and distinct, which can be eliminated and removed. And then the other one is, of course, the control test. One or more United States persons have the authority to control all substantial decisions of the trust. So this is, you need to pass both of these to become a U.S. person for trust law. There's differences now made between these distinctions in these statutes and the old relevant court cases when they were trying to construe them as corporations and associations. These terminologies they used back then are only applicable to corporations now. They don't use it for the description of a trust here. But the, the same principles apply. If you're not created by statute, that's one takeaway from them. If you don't give them authority and powers within your trust, that's another takeaway from them. As long as you can't give them primary supervision because you have provisions in your trust that accommodate for that, or it's not a charitable trust because that's a creature of the, of the public also, then you're good. But at least you guys could see the, the differences between them. Next time I'll go through this one, Kinross versus Cooper. They go into a little bit more detail, but it was, it was specific in terms of a state. So same concept, domestic public, one for federal and the other one local for this state. All right, and that's all for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe. And uh, for sure, let me know what you guys think. Have a good one.